happened again today, which is sort of throwing a real complete spanner in the works but in, if I'm completely honest I'm not really that surprised and something that I've kind of quietly been talking to myself about and I kind of came to the realization a while ago I think maybe at the beginning of the year that more than likely whenever the clubs do reopen because it did feel like the Tory government that we have here in the UK kind of went out of their way to basically be as um, vague as possible and um, uncommunicative uncommunic uncommunicative whatever that word is with the nighttime industry in general they sort of treated nightlife as a bit of an afterthought even though it contributes a hell of a lot of money to the overall gdp of this country let alone the city as, itself but it did feel as if like they didn't really care about this you know the long-term future of most of these venues of people's jobs or people's ability to make an income it just seemed like a bit of an afterthought and i did think at the beginning of the year whenever the clubs do reopen we just need to enjoy them for whenever they are open for whatever time period that they exist for and i did think to myself you know what i wouldn't be surprised if somehow it turns out that we are able to travel to other countries in europe to go and party before we're actually able to party within our own shores and then you know the first delay of the june 22nd date or whenever it was that first freedom date that came and went because you know the numbers spiked up and allegedly we needed more time to get them under control and now the numbers are you know fairly up as well and they haven't gone down a considerable amount and now we've kind of been allowed to basically go back outdoors and resume clubbing and all that good stuff but then today when it was meant to be announced there's a weird twist of fate just before it was meant to be announced um Boris Johnson and Savage Javid the guy that took over from what's his face um were did come in contact with some Somebody that tested positive with COVID, so both had to isolate. So Boris had this big celebration he was meant to do in terms of announcing the Freedom Day. That kind of got scuppered. So he had to do it. He had to kind of do the whole press conference today in via Zoom, announcing the kind of you know um, lifting of all restrictions in the UK when it comes to COVID. And then in a weird, mad surprise that no one saw coming, right? Because usually whenever it's come to um, you know uh, outlining policy changes in terms of our approach with COVID, most of the time, for the most part, especially if it's been something contentious the information has been leaked to the press ahead of time to kind of gauge the public sentiment and then across you know over the over the next couple of days or whatnot then they kind of rejig it and then present it to the public but this is one of the first bits of information relating to covid response that has become completely out of the blue no one had any inkling of it whatsoever so this goes to show that they do purposely link that's this is confirmation if we needed it that the government does purposely leak stuff and if they want to keep secrets they can pretty easily because I, no one had any inkling of this anyone i follow on social who's really you know in tune with what's going on with the nightlife scene and everything and governments and local governments or whatnot i didn't hear a peep about this from everybody so this is really a big shame in terms of things going forward but again not a surprise in my book but the headline series as follows two jabs needed to enter covid um sorry two jabs needed to enter nightclubs from september and of course they're talking about vaccine passports going forward right so the you the vaccine passports that we were led to believe wouldn't be introduced as a way to gain entry um in various in industries is now going to be introduced as a way to come somehow curb the numbers of covid it's just really really disappointing so this is the following people attending nightclubs and other venues um where large crowds gather in england will need to be fully vaccinated from the end of september the government says latest figures show 35 percent of 18 to 30 year olds have not had their first job which is the main thing that they're sort of combating against they're hoping if they basically make it mandatory for you to have a vaccine passport in order to enter it's going to basically force this group of people from 18 to 30 to get their first jab at least which i think in my opinion will end up backfiring but hey let's continue currently nightclubs and other crowded venues are only encouraged to ask clubbers to prove um to show proof of vaccination and negative test or immunity which again is up to their own discretion but boris johnson said that he was concerned by the continuing risk of transmission the announcement came on the day the nightclubs in england were allowed to reopen after 16 months of closure the prime minister told the press conference on monday i do not want to have to close nightclubs again as they have as they have elsewhere but it doesn't mean nightclubs need to do the social but it does mean nightclubs need to do the socially responsible thing as we said last week we do reserve the right to mandate certification at any point if it's necessary to reduce transmission even though they said quite clearly i think it was dominic michael gover one of them says we're not going to have vaccine passports they're unconstitutional they're discriminatory like now nah, it's just yeah whatever and as i should um serve notice 
now that the end of September, when all over 18s have had their chance to de double jabbed, we're planning to make full vaccinations the condition of entry of nightclubs and other venues where large crowds gather. Mr. Johnson added that he wanted to be able to take back that he, he didn't, sorry, he, he added that he wanted to be able to take back their freedoms, but to do this, we must remain cautious. Um, nightclubs are reopening in North Ireland and Wales on Monday, but they are still closed in Scotland. The Welsh government has said that it would never mandate the use of vaccination passport, but that the businesses would be free to ask for them, which is definitely the way you should probably go about things. And for me, the thing that kind of really sticks out with this is, number one, I'm not surprised. If, if they generally do think the numbers are way too high to basically... Um, really let the kind of reins off and say hey back to normality fair enough but then it kind of throws into question everything that we're doing right now right like why would you lift the restrictions to allow people to go back to nightclubs in the first place if people need to use COVID next COVID vaccination passports in order to gain entry because a vaccination passport for me is more so an indication of the kind of fraught nature of cases and deaths or whatever it may be right it's a clear indication that there's an issue happening and we're trying our best to keep a little cool that's the first thing then of course there's this weird thing that's going on too about how do you individually mandate each club to make sure they do it who at the venue is going to be enacting such a thing will venues have to hire additional people to make sure that they scan people's details accordingly um will it negatively affect businesses in terms of allowing them to make money especially during the time that they've been closed for the best part of 16 months they're just about to get their feet under the table and they only have what a month maybe two and a half months of actually being able to gain some money back at the bar and then at that point um a large majority of their um punters or customers who are anti-vax or don't want to um you know have to share their medical details are now going to be um dissuaded from going to the club which is going to lead a lot of places to maybe having to close like what an absolutely insane state of affairs to be in and again like i said like there was no consultation from what i've read so far with the nightlife industry or the nighttime um industry or association whatever they are i think it's ntia um they didn't really consult anybody there wasn't a heads up given they found Found out about this complete change that's going to happen in September on the day the clubs reopened the same time that we did. So no heads up, no announcement, no way to kind of get your affairs in order, nothing. Just, hey, this is going to change again in September. And it kind of makes you think too. Um, if they generally think that they can reopen now, because, you know, um, if not now, when, that sort of kind of line they've been using, why would they need to have vaccination passports since September if things are meant to be getting better later on? And why would you, again, like I said, I'm not really a fan of uh, mandatory um, vaccination passports in order to gain entry in any places. I'm not a fan of forcing people to get a passport to do anything in life in general. But you would you would have think the best way to kind of get people to be more compliant would have been to maybe lay this out as one of the consequences of people not getting the vaccinations to begin with at the start when you started rolling them out, right? Maybe kind of lay it down as a sort of uh, backhanded, you know, not so subtle threat. Like, hey, guys, if you don't get vaccinated or tested regularly then this might lead to this and this happening as a scenario this was never a scenario that was ever going to be on the table and there's a weird thing going on now where so allegedly it's going, only going to apply to nightclubs not to pubs which is again really really baffling why do pubs somehow become exempt from having a vaccination passport but clubs but clubs are if anything some could argue especially the night the pubs that i can basically frequent in the area that i live in in london most of these pubs are basically in buildings that are far older than any nightclub i've been to so ventilation systems are pretty much non-existent in a kind of way to combat covid for the most part maybe for the general health and safety but in terms of it being covid compliant they are nowhere near good enough so to suggest that somehow pubs are far more safer than a nightclub is pretty much insane especially again if you've been to a pub in london you know that you know the carpet alone has probably got more stories in it than the ventilation system itself so i feel um somewhat somewhat sorry again for people who are in the industry who operate in these places who kind of again for myself as being a sort of you know a dj that plays in regular bar in pub in local bars and pubs and somebody that kind of attends the odd rave here and there on the weekend i don't really have that much skin in the game i have some skin in the game but my kind of day-to-day -day life and my ability to make money and pay my rent isn't dictated by clubs but for the people that are i just feel really sorry because 
your kind of future again is kind of left up in limbo. You don't really know where you stand. You don't can't really make any long term plans at all. Um, you don't know if you're going to have a job again in September. You don't know if you're going to have a job again in August. You know what I mean? You never know how quickly things can change. And I think I think I might have pointed this out before on the show, but this is why I've said from the very onset: whatever time we get given to go out and to enjoy ourselves, just enjoy, just basically enjoy yourself, make the most of it, because there's no guarantees that this is going to last any longer than the time that we have available now. The same goes for holidays. If you're thinking about going away somewhere, plan your trip and try and execute it as soon as you can. I'd say within the next two weeks, to two to four weeks maximum. Don't plan anything months in advance because there really is no guarantee that those plans will come into action or come to fruition at the future date that you want to go to and i think we've all kind of suffered it's, you know covid has taken a mental toll on all of us and i think the least the last thing you should be doing to yourself is abusing yourself like you know um without yeah abusing yourself on purpose by kind of setting yourself these um lofty things that you want to do and then having to disappoint yourself by things changing in the government that you don't really have any control over so if you can book something within the next two or three weeks if you want to go away if you're going to go back on a dance floor just enjoy the moment that you have available you know hug some strangers kiss some strangers hook up with people dance do a cook do loads of drugs and toilets and stuff do as much as you can in the space the time that we have available because there is no guarantee honestly that things will get somewhat better or but yeah there's no guarantee things will get better but i am pretty certain they'll get worse in the future especially if they're already doing these really duplicitous um sort of underhand sneaky tactics now because like i mentioned before at the beginning of this segment this is the first time in the history of the covid19 response in the uk where a legislation or policy has come in that hasn't been leaked to the public it always gets leaked before and because they want to test the you know the public reception but i think because they knew how much people would push back on this and how irate it would make an entire industry of people that they actively ignored and sort of kind of scoffed at, at the beginning of lockdown they kind of did this in secret and now they've basically left everybody, you know, holding their pants up and it's really, really shocking. But again, no real surprise, really. Like I said in the beginning, I always kind of had imagined there was going to come a scenario where vaccine passports were going to be a mandatory thing that you needed to either fly or to get entry in certain places. And I'm not for forcing people to get vaccinations. I'm not for all of that nonsense. I think if you don't want to get it, you don't have to. If you know all the health risk involved and you make an informed decision not to get it, fair enough. Um, but I do think also you just have to accept the consequences that come with it. Unfortunately, the government have put us in a position or we've put them in a position where we basically allowed them this unrequisite, you know, this sort of unrequented levels of control that they're now kind of reluctant to let go of. You know, this sort of level of influence and power is somehow addicting, right? In in the manner it kind of how you would be able to control and change legislations and the fact that you're, you know, in front of video cameras every single day and you're on the news, you're in front of papers. It's there's something... It's quite addicting. I can definitely understand why these politicians don't want to let us kind of go back to living our normal everyday lives because if we do, they sort of they sort of disappear into insignificance, right? So they're kind of really holding on to power and influence for dear life, right? Even though they know, you know, more people are getting a bit more um, uh, aware of the case of what the issues going on. They're not really being kind of twanged by all the news and all that nonsense, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. But like I said, just enjoy the time that you have available in the club for now. And then just take the situation every day as it comes. But yeah, two jabs needed to go into clubs from September, man. Who would have guessed it in it? Who would have guessed it?